Hello, welcome. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. I'm punctual. On time. What's the difference? What's the difference between on time and in time? In time is flexible. In time is conditioned. On time is absolute. In time is relative. For example, this show starts at 12 noon sharp Spanish time. Spanish time. 12 o'clock noon sharp on the dot. And so if I start late, I'm late and I'm not on time. If I start early, I'm early and not necessarily on time. But in time is relative. For example, if you go, if you go to see a if you go to see a, a musical, or well, if you go to see a, hmm, a play, for example, a play, you know, de teatro. You go to see a play, and you arrive late, and the, and you say, and there, wait, I'm hearing myself speak now. Okay, I'm still hearing myself speak. All right, can you hear me now? All right. <laughs> we're having technical problems. We're using a new system, by the way. And so there could be some glitches. A glitch is like a, a bug, you know, to debug a computer program, debugging the computer, well, de-glitching. We, we could have some kinks or some glitches in this along the way. So bear with me or bear with us. Aguantad con nosotros, se dice en inglés. Bear with us. But I was talking about arriving in time. We arrived late for the opera or for the play, but we arrived in time for the second act, segundo acto de la obra de teatro. Llegamos a tiempo para. So in time is a tiempo para. In time for this in time. I arrived late. I reached the train station late. I wasn't on time, but thank God the train was just starting to leave and I got there just in time. I got there in time to catch the train at two minutes past one. I was supposed to be there well before one o'clock. Well before one o'clock because the train was supposed to leave at 12 o'clock, but for some reason it left at two minutes past one, right? And so I got there late. I didn't get there on time, but I got there in time to catch the train. All right, so a little bit of cultural enrichments here. And I already have people writing in, Mercedes, good morning, Richard. I'll see you this evening in the master class. Yes, this evening I have a master class in the Junta Municipal de Retiro. And so Mercedes is one of my most loyal followers. And so I'm sure I'll see her. And also from Melo. Hello, Melo. Hi, how are you? And also from, uh, uh, from Vicente, City of Vicente, maybe Manzana. Ballesteros, good morning. It's a pleasure to hear you. Say, orejarme de oreja or to hear con la H. Of course, es una rata. We call it a typo. A typo is the most common word. Typo, they typo, it comes from typographical error. Error tipográfico, al tipear o al mecanografiar. Verbo que ya no se usa. Eh? But we say typographical error, and the short is typo, a typo. And so typo es una rata, a typo. It's just a silly mistake. It's a pleasure to hear you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah. And also, Angel, my God, I'm already getting a lot of, I'm already, I'm already, I'm already getting a lot of, of messages. Good morning, Richard. It's nice to hear you again. All right. It's nice to hear you again. I'm already, I'm already receiving messages. Fijaos en la conectividad silabica aquí. I'm already. I'm already, I'm already, como la ciudad sueca, Malmo. I'm already, I'm already in Malmo. I'm already, I'm already, my God. Well, thank you very much for being so punctual. Huh? You're here sending me messages. Hello, Richard, nice to be your student again. Well, you're, student all, you're my student all the time, not only one hour every Monday, because if you continue studying and you follow my indications or you follow my advice, siempre en singular advice, es incontable, si, si sigues mis consejos, en español se puede decir en singular o en, o en plural, si sigues, sigues mi consejo o si sigues mis consejos, ahora bien en inglés, if you follow my advice, ya está, advice con C, C, el verbo advise, pronunciación diferente, advise, es con S, to advise. I advise you. Te advierto. Te aviso. Y también te aconsejo. I advise you. 
to continue studying English as much as possible. So, Don Adolfo, it's a pleasure to have you here. All right, what are we going to talk about today? We can talk about anything under the sun. Anything under the sun. We can talk about microphones, strangers in the night. But um, I think it's better to talk about something a little bit more useful than simply about microphones. Microphones exist to amplify sound. If I speak into a microphone, it makes people in the back of the auditorium can hear me much better than if I just use my voice. For example, I'm not crazy about opera, although there are many people who are totally uh, enamored of opera, but I'm not crazy about opera. Even though I like music and I compose music, I'm not an opera fan. But I understand that when you go back 70, 80, 90 years, they didn't have public address systems. A public address system is a sistema de, de amplificación, yeah? de, de, de sonido. To address is dirigirse a. I'm, I'm addressing you. I could address you de tuteo or de usted. I could address you by usted, or I could ad address you with to, to address. An address is also a speech. For example, the inaugural address every four years on the 20th of January, every four years, the new president or the re-elected old president gives his, in, his or her, for the moment his, inaugural address. Also, you remember the most famous speech, the most famous speech in the history of the United States was the Gettysburg Address, given by Abraham Lincoln on the battlefield of Gettysburg in southern Pennsylvania about five months after the battle in order to consecrate, consagrar, to consecrate the field of the people who had fallen. 60,000 people died in three days in the Battle of Gettysburg. And so he gave an address in honor of the fallen, los caídos, fijaos, fallen, the fallen on both sides, and on the north and the south. And he said, four score and seven years ago, our fathers, nuestros padres fundadores, our fathers founded a nation based on the idea of liberty and the of the and a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. All right. So, but it's interesting because uh, four score and seven years ago. That's strange. Score has several meanings. One meaning is el, the resultado deportivo. What's the score? What's the score? Three to two, two to one. That's the score. But a score also is la banda sonora de una película. The score. The score of a, of, a, of a play as well, the score. Even the, we use it as a verb to score a movie. Voy a poner la banda sonora a esta película. Yo como músico, I'm going to score the movie. But score, interestingly, interestingly, has an old meaning that we don't use anymore. It's una ventena, una ventena, score. So he said cuatro ventena, hace cuatro ventenas y siete años. And it's interesting because in French they say quatre-vingt-dix, to say, to say, uh, 70, wait, no, to say 90, quatre vingt-dix, quatro vientos y diez, quatro ventenas y diez, quatro vingt, and uh, it, so it's, it's similar. So we say in English, score, it is an old word sim similar to ventenas, or quatre vingt, quatre vingt, quatre vingt-dix. So, four score and seven years ago, our fathers founded, etc., etc. That's the Gettysburg address. Now, to address also means simply to address people. Uh, how should you, for example, tomorrow I'm having a dinner with the Pope, the Roman Catholic Pope, and I need to know how to address him. I can't say, hello, Mr. Pope. I mean, I can say, hello, Mr. President. If I have dinner with Donald Trump, I will say, uh, good, good evening, Mr. President. How are you? All right, but the Pope, I don't know. You'd say Monsignor? Mi Señor, Monsignor? Maybe. I don't know. That's how to address somebody. Also, we say how to address, for example, when you're playing golf, you say how to address the ball. You know, how to situate yourself in front of the ball. It's how to address the ball. I remember a man, a, a bus driver and his neighbor, they decided to learn golf, to learn how to play golf. And so they bought a book on how to play golf. And the first thing it says was, address the ball. 
And he said, and he said to his neighbor, my God, what do you mean? Address the ball. And he looks at the ball and says, hello, ball. <laughs> and so he was confusing address in this case. So the Gettysburg Address is giving a speech. Most people suffer a certain degree of stage fright. Milisthenico, when they have to give a speech. I'll talk about that in a few minutes, but first I want to catch up on my uh, messages. From Ivan, I think I remember Ivan from last week. Hello, Master Richard. Por que Master Richard? Mr. Mr. Vaughn. Master Richard. I'm currently doing my English homework. Ay, te compaño sentimiento. Poor guy, I'm sorry. I have to rewrite, toma, rewrite and see my, some sentences from a more emph, in a more emphatic way. Okay. Tienes que reescribir unas frases de una forma más enfática, más ah, decidida. I have to rewrite some sentences in a more emphatic way. For instance, the way people drive is totally insane. It's highly funny. The way people drive is totally insane. Yeah. People are insane drivers. Dri drivers are crazy. Drivers are absolutely out of their mind. Which is not true. Some people, yes. Some people are dangerous drivers. You have to watch out for the other guy. Watch out means to, ojo, tener cuidado, to look out. When you're driving, in, in some countries, you need to drive offense, defensively and offensively. In the U.S., in the United States, where people drive usually carefully, you, you need to be a defensive driver. Watch out for the other guy. Here in Madrid, also, you have to be a defensive driver, but you have to be offensive too. You have to move forward. And boom. Otherwise, they will uh, block you in and you'll never get anywhere. All right. So, where are we now? Could you tell me what your favorite band is? The Beatles. But I have many. I mean, if you say, what's my second favorite band? That would be a big, that would be a, a difficult decision. My second favorite group or band but the first is the Beatles. I grew up with the Beatles. And of course, my second favorite, that's a good one. My second favorite could be Queen. My third would be Super Tramp, maybe. My fourth would be, hmm, I don't know, Yes. Yes, you remember the group Yes? My fifth would be, I don't know. But really, to tell you the truth, my favorite band is Johann Sebastian Bach. <laughs> Followed by Brahms, followed by Tchaikovsky and Beethoven, etc. But then if we go into modern or contemporary music and pop music and rock music, by far the Beatles, by far the Beatles. But there are a lot of groups. It's very difficult to... Besides, starting in 1974, when I came to Spain permanently, I didn't have time to listen to music. I was too busy. I was stuck in the dark forest numbering trees, you see. Now I'm up on the hill watching how the forest grows from a strategic point of view. But when I was young, I, was, I had a hammer, nails, and uh, little plates with numbers, chapas, and I was numbering every tree in my forest, building a forest. Now I have other people, 25, 30, 35 years old, in the dark of the, of the forest, numbering trees. But at that time, I didn't have time to listen to pop music or to rock music, so I lost touch. Starting in 74, 75, I lost touch for many years with the currents of rock and pop music. I didn't even pay much attention to the swing era or the, or the Saturday Night Fever with John Travolta and uh, the Bee Gees. I just don't remember much. More questions. So that's my favorite band, the Beatles. Okay. Mi miedo atroz a cometer errores hablando y escribiendo en inglés. Y que pueden, que pueden, it must be a contain, mighty. I'm trying to understand. Que tienes un miedo atroz a cometer errores hablando. Yo cometo errores hablando en español y en inglés también. I make mistakes in my own language. Come on. Y escribiendo en inglés. Y que pueden reírse de ti. People are not going to laugh at you. I, uh, I don't laugh at people. When I receive some people mistakes, I don't laugh at people except once. All right. Once, a person said he had a pain in his gorge. He meant la garganta. Un dolor de garganta. He said gorge. Now, gorge is garganta en francés. Gorge. But in English, gorge is un tajo, un abismo. Like in Ronda. 
That's the, I think that's the only time I laughed. All right. But no, people don't laugh when you make mistakes. You please, you need to go to Vaughn Town in Baugan Town. That will eliminate this mania, this phobia that you have. It's a phobia. All right. Un ejemplo de este mensaje. No, it's a fine. I understand your message, Maite. Don't worry so much. Life is too short. Come on, just, just don't be afraid and start gaining confidence in yourself. And uh, if you have trouble, if you simply cannot overcome this, and if you have the minimum level of English, then I do recommend going to Vaughn Town. It's, um, it's a very... It's an incredible psychological change, and it takes place in only six days. It's a psychological change. You will be a different person when you finished, I guarantee you. But you need to have the minimum English level to go in order to understand the native speakers who come as volunteers, and in order to express yourself, minimal, just rudimentary expression is enough. But nevertheless, if you have the minimum level, Von Tan will solve this problem for you in only six days. You will be a different person when you finish, not only linguistically, but psychologically. You'll be a different person. All right, more. My God, I'm, I'm getting a lot. Yolanda, hello. Lovely to see. Well, I can't see you. You can see me. Do I look okay today? Hmm? Yeah? Huh? Should I button my jacket? Huh? Is it better that way? Yeah? How's that? Do I look better now? Yeah? Well, okay. Well, in any case, then I'll button my jacket, Yolanda. How are things in Cantabria? How's the weather? How's the weather? You know, it's interesting. I say, how's the weather? To tell you the truth, I don't care what the weather is like in Cantabria. It's a form of the hablar. It's a way of speaking to say, how's the weather? Now, if you really want to know what the weather is like, because you need to know, we don't say, how's the weather? Say, what's the weather like? I mean, if I call and I talk to Yolanda and tell hey, Yolanda, how are you doing? Fine. Hey, how's the weather in Cantabria? It's simply to make conversation. But if I'm my wife and, I, and I'm getting dressed for work in the morning and say, darling, can you look outside? What's the weather like today? What's the weather like today? When I really want to know, I say, what is the weather like? ¿Qué tiempo hace hoy? ¿Cómo está el tiempo hoy? What's the weather like? What is the weather like? What's the weather like? Yes. What's Houston like? What's Dallas like? What's it like to live in Sweden? I have no idea. I've never lived there. So what's it like? Como es? Como es? Como es Pedro? What is Peter like? Ahora, como esta Pedro? How's Peter? What's Peter like? Como es tu nuevo jefe? What's your new boss like? What is he like? Or what is she like? What's it like to teach English on TV? What's it like to teach English on the radio? What's it like? What's it like? What's it like coming to Spain with $300? I mean, I came here when I landed in this country. Well, I didn't land. I came by train from Paris. I only had $300 in my pocket and only had one friend. So all the rest I've created. All right. What's it like starting from scratch? Como es partir de cero en un negocio y crear algo grande, crear algo grande? What's it like? But it's easy if you work hard. Working hard is not difficult. Working hard is just making an effort, but it's not technically difficult to work hard. And so you know that if you work hard and do your best, and every single day you try to produce the greatest amount of quality, you know that after 30 years, boom, you're going, you're going to be on the crest of the wave. It's impossible to fail. If you work hard every day and you make a sincere effort, where are we now? Manuel Sanchez, how are you, Manuel? It's a pleasure to see you again. It's a pleasure to know you're seeing me, but I can't see you. I assume you're there. Ahora, asumo significa en inglés supongo. Doy por, doy por hecho, doy por sentado. I assume you're there, but uh, I can't see you. The only thing I can see is a very naked little object, objeti, objetivo, objeto. It's a little camera. But I can, I can see that there are thousands of people on the other side of that camera. More questions. Where are we? Where are we? Primitivo. I love that name. Primitivo Lopez. Saludos desde Mexico lindo. Yes, I like Mexico. Just this morning on the radio, I was talking about Guanajuato. It was funny. Because <laughs> in 1973, in the winter, 
Wait a minute. In Christmas, in Christmas in the, during the Christmas break, we say the Christmas break, las vacaciones, de Navi, Nav, las vacaciones navideñas, during the Christmas break, 1973 to 74, I took a three-week trip to Mexico by bus going around. And I went to San Miguel de Allende. Everybody, every tourist goes to San Miguel de Allende. Then I went to Guanajuato. And I remember in Guanajuato, there was, I was, there was a hot dog stand para, para vender hot dogs. Because in Mexico, they say hot dog. And so I went, and because I had been living in Spain one year before, I said, un perrito caliente, por favor. And there were two girls standing there, and they looked at me and started laughing. And I said, ¿qué pasa? I said, ¿Cómo? Said, un perrito caliente. And they started laughing. O sea, es, es un hot dog. Ah, okay. Because in Spain, in Spain, people say perrito caliente. They don't say hot dog. But apparently in, in uh, Mexico, they say un hot dog, por favor. It's like here in Spain, they say iceberg. But in all of Latin America, they say iceberg, iceberg. In Spain, people say wifi. In all of Latin America, they Wi-Fi, like in English. In any case, differences are interesting always. So, Primitivo, thank you very much, and saludos. Luis, buenos días. ¿En qué consiste ese programa de seis días? Ah, www.vaugantown.com Vaugantown.com or grupovaugan.com Pestaña, Vaugantown, or Residenciales. It's... um. It's the most incredible experience. What's it's the it's the the most my, the most important moment of my career of forty five years teaching English. It is es la hazaña más importante que he hecho en mi vida profesional. Vaughan Town, not Vaughan Radio, not this, not television. No, Vaughan Town is the most incredible creation. I, it still surprises me. Every day, every week, it still surprises me to see so much change in such a short amount of time. I mean, I'm not planning, it's not my intention on these, on these streaming programs of t televised streaming to, to, uh, to give you um, sales promotion, uh, but Vaughn Town is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. It's the cheapest program in the world if we measure <laughs> results for money spent. The return on your investment is incredible. Many, many people, in fact, I think the majority of the people, at least in Spain, donde este sentido de ridículo es tan arraigado, uh, we have to change that. That's a psychological block. It's not a language problem. It's a psychological problem. Boom, we have to break it. We have to break it. And we break it in six days. But you have to enter at a minimum survival level. Beginners are not allowed. So a minimum survival level. So look at it. Grupobaugan.com, sección Baugantown. O creo que también directamente en Baugantown.com. Me ha pedido más town, pueblo, Baugantown.com. All right, Luis, thank you very much. Ivan again, hello, dear Richard. Uh, I often read in the credits of the series expression to be continued. Why do you use it? Well, se continuará. Este programa continuará. We say hacer continuado, literalmente. Suena raro en castellano, pero en inglés no. To be continued means sujeto a continuación, ¿no? Visto, visto para continuación. To be continued, hacer continuado. All right, is what we say. And it's, you say, the correct form would be this, it will continue. No, that doesn't sound very good in English. Sorry, Ivan. But uh, to be continued sounds much better. But it's interesting because what is correct is what we hear all the time. For example, beautiful means hermoso, bello, precioso. And ugly means fail. Now, if by decreto ley, by a royal decree, we'd switch. Starting today, starting tomorrow, ugly means beautiful, and beautiful means ugly. And people are forced to use them separately. Within 100 years, the word ugly will sound beautiful. And the word beautiful will sound ugly. It's funny. It is funny about these things, how we develop, 
how words develop the feeling of the words based on the meaning of the words. All right. Shall we continue to be continued? Okay. Adolfo, how are you, Adolfo? Now I'm studying English after 20 years without practicing it. And I want to tell you that your books, your po podcast, creo, and your media resources are amazing. Well, thank you very much. Son 45 años de desarrollo. Eh? I mean, tiempo he tenido para hacerlo, eh? It's, 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 maybe it's amazing, pero no es ninguna hazaña ni proeza. It's not a, a feat. A feat. You know, one foot is un pie. A foot. I have two feet. And I imagine you have two feet as well. Okay, but one feat means una proeza, una hazaña. Es que se escribe feat. Different spelling. F-E-A-T. So it's a feat. So, in 45 years creating all of these things, I've had plenty of time. Plenty of, no significa mucho tiempo. Plenty means de sobra, más que suficiente. I've had plenty of time to, uh, to design all these things, so it's not amazing, it's logical. It's the, what, what is amazing is that I sincerely try to help people learn English. And so that logically creates the library of different types of things that you can buy from us or, or get from us to improve your English. Yes, sir. Looking for the Philosopher's Stone. La, la Piedra Filosofal? I, I don't know how to say it in Spanish. Looking for the magic formula. I have not found the magic formula for learning English yet. I'm still looking. I've been looking for the magic formula for 45 years. My competitors always pregonan. They say they have the magic formula. Con mil palabras, usted aprenderá inglés. Con el nuevo método natural net, este verano, usted aprenderá inglés. Bullshit. It's not true. That's a lot of malarkey. That's a lot of bull. Okay? It's not true. But in any case, they make money doing it because people buy hope. Ay, a ver si es verdad. La vuelta a la esquina hay una fórmula mágica que me sigue. Quita esta espina y nos pasó tanto dolor para aprender inglés. Yeah, quiero un inglés indoloro. I want a painless program, like a painless dentist, you know. I want, can you imagine a dentist offering painless root canals? Endonocias indoloras. Well, you don't believe them. Can you imagine a university? You know, imagine a university saying, una titulación universitaria en tres meses y sin apenas esfuerzo. Are you going to believe it? Well, why do you believe people who say English in three months with very little effort? Why do you believe it? Not necessarily you. I'm talking about many, many people. Van corriendo al kiosco a comprar el nuevo invento y dejan sus cuartos a cambio de nada. In exchange for nothing. <laughs> I'm starting to get angry, okay? But no, not really. Lo tomo con filosofía. I take it in stride. Stride, son zancadas, strides. Now, for those of you like Mercedes and, uh, and others, you already know the story of the strides. But many of you who are watching me don't know the story. This is a story that took place in southern Russia on the Russian steppe, la steppa rusa, which is very flat. But the distances between the villages is very far. And a man was walking from village A to village B, a traveler, and he was walking, bah, 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 bah. and he was wondering, you know, he was, I'm a little tired. He was wondering how far, se preguntaba, he was wondering how far it would take to reach the next village, how much time. And so he saw a field worker, a man working in the fields, and he said, he stopped, excuse me, excuse me. And the man looked up, excuse me, yes. How long will it take me to reach the next village? And the man looked, said nothing, and continued working. The traveler repeated the question. I'm sorry, but I would like to know how long it will take to get to the next village. And again, the farm worker looked up, looked down, and continued, said nothing. And so the traveler shrugged his shoulders, shrugged his shoulders, and started walking again. After about five or 10 seconds, a voice said, 45 minutes. And the traveler was surprised and turned and looked. He said, uh, well, thank you. Uh, but excuse me, I asked you twice before, 
and you didn't answer me. Why the third time? And the man said, because this time I could see your strides. And, and so I could calculate the amount of time. When you were standing still, when estaba usted de pie quieto, sin moverse, when you were standing still, I couldn't see your strides, sus zancadas. Ahora que veo sus zancadas, puedo estimar el tiempo que tardará en llegar al próximo pueblo. Now I can estimate the time it will take you to reach, to reach the next village by your strides. And so you, on progressing on your English, it depends on your strides. So I expect and I, I recommend good, solid strides. Pisando fuerte con el inglés. All right, more. Use your arrows. My arrows. Okay, which way? Down. Down. All right. So, good luck, Adolfo. Manuel Sanchez, how are you? Yes, Richard. Okay. Yes, what? <laughs> it's a pleasure. Melo, is there any Vaughn school in Pamplona? No. Sorry. Hubo Conato. There was an attempt, but strangely, we didn't find enough interest in Pamplona. Maybe we made a mistake. Maybe I'm wrong or we are wrong, but... We had a television station. We were 24 hours a day television in all of Navarre. And we received no feedback, no reaction from the public. For one year, we were on television. Also, we did a collectionable, we did a collectible with the Diario de Navarra, creo que se llama. And it wasn't very successful. It's strange. So, we've had bad luck with Pamplona. Maybe in the future. Maybe we'll come back. Pamplona is a fantastic city. Named after Pompeo, Pom Pompey, the, the uh, Roman general, Pompey. Because that's where he killed Sertorius. Sertorio in there. And so it's named after him. Originally it was Pompello and then, Pom then Pamplona. All right. Where are we, Melo? Thank you very much. Dennis. Denis, all right, hola, ¿cómo está usted? Como, como usted dice, ya no estoy acostumbrado a hacer algo que hacía en el pasado. Uh, I hope you're not confused. I used, for example, I used to be younger. Antes era más joven. I used to be, I used to be, no se está acostumbrado. Antes vivía en Oklahoma. I used to live in Oklahoma. Antes tenía hijos muy pequeños. I used to have very little children. Antes, antes iba a la playa más a menudo. I used to go. ¿Qué significa que ya no? Ahora, estar acostumbrado a, ojo, es to be used to. Suena igual al used to, pero luego con to be or to get antes. I'm used to teaching. Estoy acostumbrado a enseñar. I'm, I used to teach. Yo antes enseñaba, pero ya no. Now, I'm used to teaching. Of course, I'm used to teaching Mr. Acostumbrado. It took me five months at the beginning to get used to teaching. I'm used to Spain. I'm used to the climate in Madrid. It took me one week to get used to the climate in Madrid. I'm used to the food in Spain. It took me six months to get used to the food. I'm used to eating Spanish food. I'm used to this. I'm, you get used to things. Don't confuse it with used to in the past. And I'm not sure. Hacer algo que hacía en el pasado. Me despiste un poco esa expresión, esa, esa frase. Porque estar acostumbrado a, es que estás acostumbrado a ello. No es cuestión del pasado. Empezaste a estar acostumbrado hace tiempo y ahora estás. A, I used to be used to, forzando la cuestión. But I'm used to teaching on television. That's why I can spend an hour without a script. Because I'm used to it. Estoy acostumbrado. En inglés se dice siempre estoy acostumbrado a ello. Se añade to it siempre, por obligación. I'm used to it. Yeah. Yes. Madrid está a 700 metros sobre el... You know, it's high. No, no problem. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. Okay, where are we now? Uh, Melo, Dennis, Manuel, and Manuela. What's your opinion about climate, climate? ¿Por qué climate dos veces? Well, he sent it three times, actually. He just typoed and deleted the comment on Facebook, but it still shows up. Okay, what's your opinion about climate? Uh, I climate think he means climate change. Yes. Climate change is happening. Climate change has been happening for millions of years at different points during the span of time. 
climate change happened in the, for example, Greenland, Groenlandia. It's incorrect in Spanish to say Groenlandia. It should be Verdelandia. Why? Because Eric the Red, the first Viking to reach Greenland at that time, the south of Greenland was green. That's why they called it Verdelandia, Greenland. Because, but then of course, they settled and the subsequent generation had to leave because the climate change became too cold again. So the climate change always happens. So it's something, whether it's caused by man or not, by you and me, by it's a question that has not been proven one way or the other. We just need to wait and see. I don't agree with people who are um, predicting that the coastal cities will be underwater in 12 years. I don't agree. It, they will not. I would love to make a bet. 10 to 1. I'll bet you 10 to 1 odds. If you say Venice or Cadiz or La Coruña will be underwater, I don't believe it in 12 years. It's not going to happen. And I would love to make a bet. 10 to 1. I would love to go ante notario. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even there's a congresswoman in the United States who predicts the end of the world in in 12 years. Well, 11 years now. She predicted it last year. So the world is coming to an end in 11 years. People have been predicting cataclysms for different reasons since the beginning of time, since the beginning of recorded time. And so, since the beginning of the pages of the time documented. All right. And they've been predicting. And it, doesn't, it hasn't happened. In 2012, the Mayan calendar, the world will go to an end. Well, it happens every two or three years. Somebody predicts dire outcomes. Dire means tremebundos, ominosos, horribles, dire, como dire straits, the group. They predict the dire outcomes. And then when these outcomes don't happen, we don't go back and ask for responsibility, liability. Hombre, pedir responsabilidad a los que han predecido o han predicho es to, todos estos cataclismos que asusta mucha gente. It scares a lot of people. Life will go on. It will go on. It'll be fine. Everything is getting better. Everything is getting better. I'm a natural, natural optimist. Uh, 50 years ago, 2 billion people were under the poverty line. Now only 1 billion. That's a big improvement in 50 years. Of course, there's still 1 billion. But we are progressing very well in reducing poverty and reducing malnutrition. And so there's every reason to be optimistic, despite climate change. I don't think we can control the climate. It's going to change. And if you want to, what you need to do is to study perhaps Venice, Venezia in Italy. How many days a year is the Plaza de San Marcos underwater? Because there are at least maybe 20 days a year in which the tourists need to walk on on walkways, wooden walkways above the Plaza San Marcos because of the water. The question is, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, and today, and to see the difference. That could be a very real index of climate change, the melting of the uh, snows, of the, the melting of the polar ice cap. We say polar ice cap para la, el casquete polar. We say polar ice cap, la capa de hielo polar. The polar ice cap. Melo, okay, yes, where are we? Uh, Manuel, what is your opinion about climate change? No. Okay, got it. Okay, no. Ivan again. Dennis, you could say, I was used to plus gerundio. I was used to making all my decisions alone. Eso significa, I was used to, means Antonio estaba acostumbrado a, hacer mis, a tomar mis decisiones yo solo. I was used to making, en ese caso, simplemente acostumbrado a en el pasado. En, a, en, a, en aquella época, en aquel, en aquel entonces, yo estaba acostumbrado a tomar mis decisiones yo solo. Ahora no. Ahora en, con otros. So, yes. But eso es forzar un poco la cosa. Where are we? Pepe from Valencia. Valencia. It's interesting. I always have, I sometimes I feel like strangling my students from Valencia because when they speak English, they say, I am from, I am from Valen Valencia. And I say, no, Valencia, Valencia. I say, Valencia. No, Valencia. And again, they always say, Valencia, con B y con C, C, o con la C. And finally, I say, uh, do you speak Valencian? I say, yeah, perfectly. How do you say Valencian, Valencian? Valencia. <laughs> they say in their 
<laughs> they, in Valencian, they say they say it correctly. Like in, and it's, it's identical to English. But when they speak English, they go to Castilian Spanish. And I can't break them from that. It's the same with people from Barcelona. Of course, I have Catalan, they say, I am from Barcelona. I say, no, Barcelona. Bar eso, Barcelona. No, Barcelona. And I say, do you speak Catalan? Yes. How do you say Barcelona? Bar Barcelona. Barcelona. I said, fine. Use Catalan. When think in Catalan when you're speaking in English, and you'll be closer. In fact, the Catalan L is very, very similar to the English L. You remember the song, Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly, fa la 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 la. Okay, in Spanish, you would be fa la 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 la. That's the Spanish L, L. But the Catalan L is fa la la la. It's very, very similar. And so, to speak English, if you're Catalan or Valencian, uh, I would recommend that you enter English through Catalan or Valencian and not through Spanish. All right. Where are we? These are arrows. My, uh, my arrows. We need to go down. They're teaching me a new system. You see this? Can you see it? I'm looking. They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Dennis, thank you. Well, I'm glad I was able to help you, Dennis. Marga! Margarita, Marga. Hello, I used to be boring about the English until I know Richard, your way of teaching is wonderful. Your eyes too. Can you really tell? All right. Okay. Vamos por partes. You, I used to be boring. No, no. Yo antes era aburrida o estaba aburrida. ¿Qué quieres decir? Marga. Yo creo que quiere decir que estabas aburrida. So I used to be bored. Escrito bore, eh? Ojo. When about English, about English, no about the English. No se pone el inglés, el francés, el alemán, no. English, French, German. I used to be bored with English until I met Richard. Hasta que conocí. No hasta que conocía. Hasta que, until I met Richard. And your way of teaching English is wonderful. Thank you very much. In my eyes, too. Thank you very much. Put it a I used to be bored. I remember, I always ask, when I'm teaching, would you rather? Preferiría ser esto okay. Would you rather? Would you rather? And one of my questions is, would you rather be bored or boring? Preferiría usted ser aburrido o estar aburrido? Of course, everybody says bored. Preferiría estar aburrido que ser oh, preferiría estar aburrido que ser aburrido para los demás. But I remember one student, a man, he said, I prefer to be boring. It's their problem. <laughs> Not mine. I'm, if I'm boring, at least I'm not bored. And so it was a bit of a selfish approach to this. I also asked people, would you rather be blind or deaf? And 90% of the people say I would rather be deaf. And I say, no, I would rather be blind. Blind people can teach English. Blind people can compose music. Blind people can play the guitar. Blind people can talk dynamically with their children and their grandchildren. But deaf people cannot. You don't see many deaf people in the workforce, but you can see quite a few blind people in the workforce. Both handicaps are horrible, but I think blindness or deafness is a greater handicap for the development of your skills and abilities. But nevertheless, it's an interesting question. However, for deaf people now with the implanted cochlear, it's, we're starting perhaps to solve this problem. A little bit. It's very. Uh, I'm optimistic. All right. Where are we? Let's see. With Dennis again. So I can say I am not to work at night. No, skip that one. Go to the one because uh, he repeats it. He okay. Ah, uh, okay. Luis, Luis Enrique. It's a pleasure. You must dare. Bueno, vale. You must. You must dare. You must dare. <laughs> Debes atreverte. Atreverme a hacer qué? To dare to do what? I dare to, <laughs> I, well, I have a, a helper here, what I call el brujo novato aquí, a los mandos. Yeah. Si, si llegamos al final de la clase con éxito, será una hazaña, a feat. All right, so, but do you, uh, you must dare, hmm, I must dare, that's an interesting philosophical question here. I must debo atreverme, sin decir aquí. I must dare. He must, be, he must be talking about how you must dare to learn English. 
You must make, yeah, you must dare to learn English. Maybe for the, the lady who is afraid, you must dare. Okay, good. That's what I recommend as well, Luis Enrique. For the, for the lady, if I can find her again, if I go up. Way up, way up. Go way up. I can't find her. Here we are. I think I found her. Nope. Uh, still can't find her. Maybe she's, she's lost. Hey, Maite. Maite. Oh, no. Sí, tenía un miedo atroz. Primero, no hay que tener miedo atroz a nada. Maite. Ni a nada. Ni a la vida, ni a aviones. Nothing. Don't have a miedo atroz. Try to overcome that. You know, life is not precarious. Life is not dangerous. I mean, if for, for example, an accident insurance policy. Policy seguros de muerte o, o de disability, incapacidad, por accidente, is very cheap. Es menos de un euro al día. And you, for example, if you want to buy, let's say, if you want to buy an insurance policy for 300,000 euros, 300, mil euros, to go to your beneficiaries, if you die or become disabled, permanently disabled because of an accident, it's around 50 cents a day. It's very cheap. It's very, very cheap. It's like 200 euros a year. So the insurance company, for only 200 euros a year, takes the risk of having to pay your beneficiaries 300,000 euros in case you die or become disabled in an accident. That means life is not precarious and the insurance companies know that. The likelihood the probability, the probability, the likelihood that you will reach the age of 80 is 50-50 because the lifespan is 80, life expectancy. The likelihood you'll reach 90 is about 30%. The, the probability that you will reach the age of 70 in good health and intact is about 90%. So you don't need to worry. Life is not precarious. Life is not dangerous. Please. All right. But learn English, okay? So... I can say I'm not used to work. No, I'm not used to working at night. Gerundio, no estoy acostumbrado a trabajar de noche. That's oh, Dennis. Dennis, ya no estoy, ya no estoy acostumbrado de, a trabajar de noche. I'm not used to working at night anymore. Cuando es costumbre, acostumbrarse a, con gerundio siempre. Estoy acostumbrado a venir aquí. I'm used to coming here. No estoy acostumbrado a ir allí. I'm not used to going over there. I'm not used to teaching French. I'm not used to using this microphone in class. I'm not used to. Uh, it took me a long time to get used to living in this country. Not true. To get used to living, to knowing, to speaking, to working. Okay. Alonso. Alonso Vilches. Hello. Muy buenos dias. Alfonso. Uh, Alfonso. Alfonso. Sorry. Not Alonso. Alfonso. It's a pleasure to have you here. Okay. Cesar. Or C Caesar. How can I improve fluency in English on my own without going to an English-speaking country? Uh, go to Vaughan Town, Baguan Town. Cuesta dinero, pero es la mejor inversión que puedes hacer. Or just start speaking aloud. Open a simple reader, a book with easy English, and start reading it aloud. You have, you have to say 10,000 sentences aloud. Yeah, ayer fui a la playa, mañana iré a la playa, iré a la playa si tuviera dinero, pero, pero puesto que no tengo dinero, no voy a ir a la playa, pero iré a la playa todos los días si tuviera suficiente dinero para ir a la playa. Diarrea verbal, real. It's just, you just talk, 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 talk. That's the way you gain fluency. But of course, it's better to talk to real people and not to talk to the wall. But the wall is okay. Hello, wall, how are you today? You look a little tired. Are you sure you slept okay last night? I mean, when people don't sleep very well, it's very common to see, and, and you look tired. Are you sure you're getting enough sleep? I mean, I'm talking to the wall, but it's okay. It's okay if I keep the conversation flowing, practicing and practicing and practicing, and soltando verbalmente las conocimientos que tengo dentro, hilando frase tras frase tras frase, boom, 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 boom. But it's still better to spend six days in Vontown, Town, because there, boom. Todos males. Se todos males. It's true. Your ear, you triple your ear and you double your confidence when speaking. It's very, very noticeable. All right. So, Alfonso, Cesar, 
Se Serena. Wow. Chukino. I wonder where you're from. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, where are we now? Where's your arrows? My arrows. I need to continue going down. I'm learning. I'm learning a new technology. We say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. A viejo perro no le se le enseña gracias nuevas. Dame la mano, perrito. Perrito, 13 años. Bien, mira, hazlo tú. <laughs> I'm not interested. So, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I remember trying to teach my father how to use a spreadsheet. Ojo de cálculo. Because in, on a computer, impossible. And my father was a very intelligent man. Very capable. But he was just not interested. And at, at a, beyond a certain age, people are often not interested in the new things that are coming. That's for new generations. Yeah, yo estoy pasado de fecha. Yeah, mi fecha de caducidad ya pasó. And so, really, para mí, to learn new things, well, Man. they insist. Enrique, hello from Sweden, Luis Enrique. Wow, I, I was used to working. There we go, hecho. All right. Uh, Luis Enrique, we Cubans, as cubano que vive en Suecia. All right. A Cuban who lives in Sweden. Logical. All right. We Cubans speak like people from the Canary Islands. No se dice Canaria en inglés. Las Islas Canarias. Y las Islas Canarias sin riga las Islas de los Canes. Ahí viene Canarias. No viene el, el pájaro. Uh, Isla de los Canes. O sea, Islas Perunas. Islas, las Islas Canarias. Because apparently... Many centuries ago, the first Europeans saw a lot of dogs. There are a lot of dogs on this, these islands. In las islas de los isla de las islas de los canes, las islas canarias. All right, Manuel Sanchez, how are you? Thank you, Richard. Indeed, thank you. Indeed, ya lo creo. Ivan again. Well, the same people, Ivan. If you want to learn more about English collocations, I don't remember what collocations are. I would like to recommend you visit. I recommend that you visit a web page called Just the Word. It's really, really useful. Well, I'll check it out. I'll check it out, and I'll find out what collocations means. I don't remember. I've been teaching six very successfully for 45 years without needing to know collocations and without needing to know the phonetic alphabet. The phonetic alphabet is, is an obstacle to learning. It slows you down. Collocations, I don't know. Don Ignacio, Ignacio Diaz, thanks so much. Yo diría thank you so much for all your classes. Listening to your programs, both on TV and the radio, has really made a difference in starting to be able to understand. Keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much, Ignacio, and your English is quite good. I recommend thank you. I recommend thank you for non-natives. Uh, for native people, thanks. Thank you both. We use both interchange. We we don't even realize, but thanks. Con la ese, thanks. Cuando un no nativo lo usa, a veces parece que lo está diciendo de expediente, para, simplemente para, 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 para cubrir el expediente y no para dar las gracias de verdad. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. No lo recomiendo. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Se usa para decir gracias en plan sarcástico. Muchas gracias, macho. Vaya amigo que tengo. Eh? Joder, que fine. Vaya fine que me has hecho. Muchas gracias. Thanks a lot. And so be careful with thanks a lot because if your intonation is wrong, it can be misunderstood as sarcastic. Thank you very much is always gra gracious. Thank you very much. Ivan, if you want to learn more about... No, no where are we? Susana. I know Susana. Susana. Hello, Richard. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here, especially if you're there. Uh, for those people who wonder if Vontown works, yes, it really works. I swear it changed my English forever. Contigo no necesito abuela, no necesito abuela, eh? And the way I approach English since then, it's an incredible experience, not only for English, but for your life, too. Uh, that I highly recommend. Greetings from Granada. De bellas mujeres. Da, da, da. Yes, Granada. Thank you. Thank you very much. Es Susana. Susana. And uh, it's a pleasure. It is true that Vaughn Town has changed the lives of many people for the positive, never for the negative. 
It's an incredible human experience. I designed it as a language experience, but um, curiously, it's a human experience. For many people, <clears throat> it has changed their lives. There's, it's a turning point. There's a before and an after with Vontown for many, many people. Not only Spanish people, but English volunteers, English-speaking volunteers who come as well. It has been a, a total eye-opening experience. Una experiencia que te abre los ojos. Se dice eye-opening. Ojo abriente. Una experiencia ojo abriente. Suena bien en castellano. An eye-opening experience. Susana, it's a pleasure to have you on board. Tony, Tony Moya, what's the worst English, English con E mayúscula, eh? What's the worst English accent in your opinion? I mean, what country speaks it in the way that's difficult to understand them? Well, first of all, the worst English accent is a person who doesn't speak clearly. Uno que arrastra las palabras que no vocaliza. It doesn't matter if it's in Texas, Scotland, or South Africa. Now, the most difficult, in my opinion, the most difficult accent to understand is in Scotland, Glasgow, Glasgow. If I'm in a pub in Glasgow with noise, I can't, I don't, I don't know if they're speaking English or Dutch. Second, I would say after Glasgow, I would go down to Newcastle in Northern England, what they call the Geordie accent. It's very, very difficult. Then I would go down to Yorkshire, Bradford, Sheffield, where you remember the movie Full Monty? That takes place in Sheffield. It's really, really tough. But you see, I'm speaking from the point of view of an American. For a person who lives in Glasgow, they understand Glaswegian perfectly. So it's all relative. I mean, a Glaswegian goes to Texas, they start talking, well, this microphone, I'm holding the microphone in my left hand. If I weren't holding my left hand, maybe I'd be holding my right hand or I'd put it back on its base. And perhaps a person from Glasgow would say, I can't understand what he's saying. <laughs> And um, so it's relative. So the important thing is a person to be cultured, cultivated, and with good, articulate speech. It doesn't matter the accent. And in Spanish as well. I, I've met people in the south of Texas, Chicanos or Mexico, Mexican-Americans, que tienen un español precioso, because they make an effort to speak well, and they do. Voy a manejar mi carro al estacionamiento, y cuando estacione mi carro, voy a asegurar, voy, te espero en la banqueta, etc. And you hear these people. <laughs> it's, but it's beautiful Spanish. Where are we, Vicente, Tony? Okay, Vicente. I think it's Vicente. It's a, you know, VTE. Well, I was last month in England visiting London, Bath, Bath, and Canterbury. Love your country. It's not my country. I'm from Texas. Eh, Vicente, Mr. Mazana. I'm from Texas. Soy tejano, lejísimos de, de England. Dios me libre que de ser inglés. No, I like the English. I like the English. Uh, love your country. I love England too. And I'd like to go back. I'd like to go back too. I don't know if to learn English better, English con mayúscula, uh, is better to stay in a city or in a big, in a, in a city or in a big city. I think it's, look, if you go, I recommend you go to places where there aren't Spanish speakers to begin with. Second, if you go abroad, sign up for courses in which the, your classmates are, are local people. For example, if you go to Bath, I don't recommend Bath. There are too many tourists. I would recommend Preston in the north of England, or Carlisle in the north of England, or someplace, Norwich, away from where the masses of tourists go. And then look in the yellow page as well. They don't exist. Look in the internet and find a course in cocina, ofimatica, corti confección, hípica. I don't care. It's grima. And take classes in which your classmates are local people and you make friends at the coffee machine. And so then you start speak. You speak a lot of English. That's the secret. Take classes in English, not classes of English. They're telling me. Time's up. Almost. Just a second. Let's go quickly. Don't send any more messages starting now, okay? Please. Closed. All right. Cesar, do you think Spanish people are better at speaking English now? Yes. Uh, the younger generation doesn't have the miedo escénico, el sentido ridículo, this type of fear of the younger people. Their English is not good yet, but it's much better than 15 years ago. And also, they are not afraid. That's the important thing. Eduardo del Villar. Hello, at last, I seem to understand 
La palabra English, Spanish, German, el adjetivo, inglés, España, es con E mayúscula. ¿Cuántas veces tengo que decirlo a todo el mundo? Todas las semanas, R que R. Los adjetivos y también los meses y, la, y los días de la semana son mayúsculas. February, March, April, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, English, German, Arabic, Mexican, with a capital letter at the beginning. Huh? All right. And as you seem to understand, well, I'm very happy, Eduardo. Ivan, let me illustrate it, dear, dear master. Collocations refer to how words go together or forms fixed or form fixed relationships. For example, heavy rain, high temperature, scenic view. Okay, I'll check out that website. I don't promise, because I need to remember. Rob Grams, thank you for not saying the Yorkshire accent is the most difficult. It's the third most difficult. I said Bradford, and I said Sheffield. Listening to Full Monty is a, can't, for a Texan, is a challenge. All right, because it takes place in Sheffield, which is a, the working class. Sheffield is a very industrial city in the south of Yorkshire. And they have a very clear industrial Yorkshire accent that you can't understand. <laughs> All right, but in any case, yes. Where are we, Yolanda? Social Futuro Publicity. She's sending me a website. All right, Yolanda, don't send me websites. Socialfuturo.com, publicaciones antiguas. Something about the future, social, something about the future of social life or what? We'll look it up. We'll look it up. All right. Alexis. Hi, Richard. I have many things to do, but I bumped into your video. Hmm. I came, up, I came across your video. You bump into is physical. Bumped into. You don't bump into a subject. You come across a subject. Ah, mira. Mira esto. You come across a subject. You bump into a person or physically bump into a person. Boom. Or bump into a person figuratively. Tropecé con Pedro en el... Me encontré con Pedro en el kiosco. I bumped into Pedro at the kiosk or at the newsstand. Uh, but I came across this passage in the text. Saying, me encontré, con, me encontré este pasaje en el texto. Or I came across this uh, show... On, in cyberspace, in the cyberspatio. Thank you, Alexis. And thanks for being such a terrific motivation to learn English. Ah, wait. I bumped into your video and I decided to procrastinate. Them? No, to procrastinate. But Pro it was the many things he has to do. Yeah, I know you have a lot to do, but to pro we're not procrastinating. Procrastinating is putting things off in order to avoid doing them. But here you're doing something that's even more productive than those things you're putting off. Ir aplazando las cosas to put things off. But this is more important. I mean, what's more important in life? You know, I mean, the most important thing is life is learning English, right? <laughs> well, I'm glad it's not. But in any case, let's have fun trying. Such, such a, sorry. Yeah, because he says such an terrific motivation. Uh, such a terrific, such a terrific motivation. Thank you very much. Sure. David Rodriguez, hi. Hello, Marshmallow. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to make a discreet exit. Now I'm supposed to push a button here. End. Yeah, right. the one that says end, and I can't find it. There's something the that says left. to the far left. Ah, yeah, I found it. I found it. I found the button. Say goodbye. I'm going to push it. See you next Monday, okay? Same time, same place. Bye-bye.